back with you. I've got a brilliant example of using the laser liner showing how bad angles can actually run out. Now I've come into a, another internal angle. You can see my laser. I'll even put the goggles just over the lens. Put the goggles over the lens. Look at that. Brilliant. Now I've come around the window gone over the top, kept my laser, keeping the pattern of the joints just there, up and down on that joint. The joints have been nice and true using the laser, top and bottom. It's always difficult when you're going part way across a window, say from there to there in one drop. And I've done it top to bottom, all the way under my steps, top to bottom, and it's all matched up nicely. And my laser's picking up nicely on the pattern. Now, this little strip here, it measured from the edge, top to bottom, into the angle, 13, just, just about 13 and a quarter inches. So what I've done, I've allowed the five mil, let's call it a quarter of an inch overlap. So I did a cut 13 and a half inches, just under, just under with my pencil and my fingers. I showed you how to mark off a length, just under 13 and a half inches. Top to bottom, it went lovely. I've got a nice small little overlap into the angle. Now, the off cut is being re hung top to bottom. So, to get an idea of how it was hanging, I hung it top to bottom into the angle. Then, put my laser liner vertical against it. Now, it was running out. Now, I'm going to show you how it how it can run out. Now, however it can run out when one side's fine and then the other side's not, that all comes down to plastering and how it's been built. So let me just show you. Up at the top, I've not trimmed it yet. Don't forget, you only have a, you only want a couple of inch overlap. Right, at the top, I'm into the angle nicely, no cutting. I've got on here, I've not actually squeegeed it down fully yet. On here, I'm on my laser line all the way down and then all of a sudden it runs out and I start overlapping back onto the paper I've already done. So I go from, you can just see, next to nothing there, as I come down, I'll just move my steps, as I come down it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So down at the bottom I would say that is it's a good half an inch running out. But I know that this line here, you can see the red of the line. I know that's plumb. So as so long as that's plumb and you're matching at the top or it could be the bottom, as long as you've got that plumb, don't worry about if you're having to cut a bit of that pattern off. Because what, what I've done here, you can see I've matched up the last length of paper just there which is the same part as what that is there. Now that is flowing round lovely. So horizontally, we spot on. Vertically, we spot on. It's just that down at the bottom, that angle is running out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna trim the bottom off. I'm gonna trim the top off. Make sure it's all down nicely. Push my spatula into that angle there. Make sure it's well in. Mark it carefully with a pencil and I'll ease it away and cut it with my shears. Now I don't go through that with a blade because what I don't want to do is cut through that top length of paper going through the paper that's underneath it. Past experience when I was a kid, you think, oh, it's dead easy, just run a blade down it. Yeah, you can run a blade down it, but then what you end up doing is cutting through the paper that's underneath. Can you see that? Only a fraction, fraction of an inch overlapping. You cut through that and then when it dries out it springs and it joint pulls away so we don't want to do that it's actually easier and neater just run a pencil up all the way up till it feathers out and then cut it with your shears so does that more make sense to everybody again using the laser liner you see it there it's on my pole i've got my horizontal and i've got my vertical now that vertical's spot on for the next lengths that are going to go across there all the way into that corner there and then we again we're doing exactly the same so we've already done a corner over there can you see how the pattern's going around 
We've done a corner there, see how the pattern's flowing around lovely? And I've got a pattern there, flowing around lovely. Now hopefully, when I get to that corner there, you see, uh, there, I'm hoping I can try and keep that pattern matching all the way up. Hopefully it should do. I can't do any more. If you're looking at the top for what the pattern's like at the top, it's not running out too bad at all. It's just a fraction. Again, that's down to how the probably coving's been fitted and the plaster work. But for me, I've got the verticals plumb and I've got my horizontals matching round. As a decorator, I can't do any more than that. So I'm happy. And it's not actually a bad paper, is it? You know? Remember in previous video, I said you could balance it. You can see, oh, you see there, there's a noticeable pattern, because this is your pattern repeat, noticeable pattern, noticeable pattern, noticeable pattern. Some papers, it's actually better if you measure top to bottom and find the middle and work from the middle up, so your top's balanced with your bottom. As I said previously, this doesn't really matter, it's quite a, a varied pattern and there's a lot of furniture, but we've got a nice pattern going around the top that goes all the way down to the bottom, so customer's happy, I'm happy. But no, thanks for, thanks for listening. So there we have it, we've come to the final corner, which was the corner that was matching up from the original start point. Now, thanks to the laser liner, this is a, a laser liner cross smart liner. I've kept the horizontal all the way around, you can see the horizontal going around. The vertical is there. So my last two pieces on this side were across the top and then a piece into the finishing corner where we'd lose the match. Now, we knew we'd lose the match because that's where I was wanting to lose the match. But thankfully, we've not had much movement on the paper. And you can see the patterning around here is flowing round up. These look like whales, don't they? Whales as in what you see in the sea, not whales as in the country. So that whale there comes along there nicely. So to the untrained eye, we go back a bit further. We've actually got the pattern flowing round. It might be slightly off a couple of millimetres, if that, but we've got to have a tolerance. We've got to be realistic. This is hand done. This isn't a machine doing it. I've done it. It's hand done. So getting that horizontal line round, I'm looking at that following the pattern round. I'm happy with that. Blind man on a galloping horse isn't going to be getting a tape measure out and measuring the distance. So this is a this is a good match going all the way around the room. Can you see? All the way around. And that's why I use a laser liner and not a plumb bob. I've not used a plumb bob, a weight on a piece of string for years because how can a plumb bob an area over a door and come in at the side of the door? You can't. It's too short a piece up there to plumb in side it's too difficult whereas the laser line are brilliant it goes over everything it gives me the line where i want so that's it we've done a whole room what's it take me i wasn't a full day yesterday and i've only been a morning today so probably if you cracked on you'd, you'd be about a day and this is where i'm saying to people charge for the job being done not the time taken because there's skills involved when it comes to papering anybody can paper anybody can paint for how good are you at your painting? How good are you at your papering? That's where the um, next level of the Phil Beckwith painter and decorator skills comes in. Look, next level papering now. We've done next level spraying. We've done next level painting, painting a wall. You remember the nearly an hour long painting of a wall um, video, but now we're on to papering. So yeah, thanks for listening. These are all in segments. Watch the other segments if you've not seen them all. Put them all together and it gives you the idea now internal angles are very similar to doing an external angle still measure from your last edge oh, i can't even do it from your last edge to the corners allow a little bit of an overlap wrapping it round an external angle could be five mil quarter of an inch wrap it round but at the top to the bottom might be running out so allow for the longest widest piece and then you'd have to trim back we'll do that on another video that's for another day. I have mentioned it on previous
papering videos, but for now that's for another day. This, all internals. So yeah, brilliant. Thumbs, comments, smash the like button, and I'll see you on the next one.